In this episode of Be Hooked Crochet, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the Mystic Mermaid Cocoon. Now this pattern was originally released back in 2014 and has gone through a redesign this year in 2017, which includes five different sizes, brand new yarn, and a few modifications to the pattern. Well, you can get the free pattern and the written instructions as well as the supplies list at BeHookedCrochet.com slash mermaid tail. Well, I'm your host, Brittany, and I'm super excited about this one. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin our mermaid cocoons by making a slip knot. And we'll place that loop on our hook and we're going to chain four. So that first one never counts as one. So we have one, two, three, and four. So now what these four chains represent is one double crochet. So three chains are going to be our first double crochet and our fourth chain there right next to the slip knot, that's going to be the center of the ring. So we're going to proceed with round one by making seven double crochets in that first chain. So I've worked my first one there. And the second, we're just going to place all of these double crochets in the same chain. Now, once you have your seven double crochet in that first chain, we're going to join with the slip stitch to our third chain. So right here, you can see my chain three, that was from the very beginning. So I'm just going to count, this is the first chain, the second chain, and the third chain is right there. I just wanna stick my hook into that chain and slip stitch. For round two, we're going to increase. So we want to make two double crochets into every stitch. Before we start that, we're going to chain three. This is going to count as a double crochet and we're gonna pair that up at the end of the round. The first thing we want to do is find our first stitch, which is right here. We're going to make two double crochets there. And then we'll locate our next stitch and make two double crochets into that stitch as well. And we're gonna do this all the way around. We'll just make one, uh, two double crochets into every stitch. So when you've made it all the way around, at this point, we need to have a total of 16 double crochets. And if you count everything from here, I have a total of 15. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this round, we're going to pair that chain three up at the end of the round. And so that's what we're going to do here. So I have my two double crochets and that second to last stitch. And then I'm going to 
work my double crochet into this space right here. Now there is a couple of different ways of doing this. When you're pairing up a chain three, you can either pair it up here at the end or you can do it at the very beginning. I prefer this method just because it limits the gap a little bit. So when you put your stitch right next to the chain, so that would have been our first stitch, then you have a bigger gap right here. And this is just a personal preference of mine. So now we're going to join with a slip stitch to that third chain. And that'll wrap up round two. Moving on to round three, we're not going to increase for this round. We're just going to make one double crochet into every stitch. So we'll start by chaining three. We'll find our first stitch, which is right here. You can see that post right next to our chain three. That's how we know it's the first stitch. And we'll double crochet there and once into every remaining stitch. So we're going to have a total of 16 stitches once again at the end of round three and we are counting that chain three as a stitch. Now when you've made it all the way around, you just wanna double check your count to make sure you have 16 stitches. That's also gonna help you determine where you're supposed to stop on this round. So before we worked into this little space, and that was only because we were increasing, not because it is a stitch that we should work into. So my last stitch is going to be right next to that space, and that's stitch number 16, and we're going to join with a slip stitch to that third chain to finish off round three. Now round four is exactly the same as round number three. We're going to begin by chaining three and we just wanna work one double crochet into every stitch. At the end of your round, you'll join with a slip stitch to that third chain, just like we demonstrated before, and you'll have a total of 16 stitches at the end of the round. So at the end of round number four, your mermaid tail looks something like this, and we're ready to move on to round five. Now round five, we're going to increase once again, and we're going to do so at a different increment than we did before. So let's start off by chaining three, and that is going to count as a double crochet. This time, what we want to do is increase every other stitch. So back here in round number two, we increased every stitch and that meant we put a double, we put two double crochets into every stitch. So this time we're going to increase every other stitch and our chain three is going to count as the single stitch by itself. So we want to find our first stitch right here and you can see that by the post that's right next to the chain. That's how we know it's the first stitch and we're gonna work two double crochets in that first stitch. Now for the next stitch, we're just going to work one double crochet. And we'll repeat that. The next stitch will make two double crochets. And in the next stitch, just one. So that's our repeat for round five. Go ahead and finish crocheting round five. You'll have a total of 24 stitches at the end of round five. Once you've reached the end of round five, your last stitch will have two double crochets in it. That will be true if you've done your increases correctly. So once you finish that up, once again, you'll have a total of 24 stitches and you'll join with a slip stitch to your third chain. Now moving on to round six, we're going to increase again. This time we're changing the interval just slightly and you'll notice that's the trend as we go through this pattern and just for crocheting in the round in general. Anytime you are increasing in the round, you wanna do so at a specific interval and that's going to help 
make the shape exactly what you want it. So that's how you would do a round or a circle or a cone, anything like that. So just keep that in mind as you're working through this pattern and learn that maybe for the next project. So the, to begin round six, we're going to chain three. And this time we're going to increase every third stitch. So we're going to count this chain three as our first of two stitches that are in between our increases. We'll locate the first stitch and we'll double crochet there. And so those are our two single stitches by themselves. So then what we want to do is our next stitch will increase. So we'll put two double crochets in the next stitch. And then we'll simply repeat. We want two double crochets that are by themselves and then an increase. So we'll make a double crochet in the next stitch and a double crochet in the next. And then we'll increase by putting two double crochets in the next. And we're just going to repeat that sequence until we get to the end of the round. Now at the end of round six, you're going to end up with 32 stitches in total. And once again, your last stitch is going to have two double crochets in it. We'll join with a slip stitch to our third chain to wrap up this round. Now, as you look at it from here, you can start to see the shape taking form. So as we increase, it's gonna fan out a little bit, but if we were to increase every single round, it would have a really drastic increase. And so the shape would be really wide and we don't really want that. So what we're going to do from this point on is we're going to alternate increasing rounds with non-increasing rounds. So for round number seven, we're going to begin by chaining three, and this is going to be a non-increasing round. So that means we just wanna make one double crochet into every single stitch. Now we'll still have our total of 32 stitches at the end of the round, and that's what I would like for you to do at this point. Finish up round number seven by making one double crochet into every stitch. Once you get to the end of your round, you will join with a slip stitch to that third chain just like we've seen previously. So here I am now at the end of round number seven and we're ready to move on to round eight. So round eight, we're going to increase again. This time, of course, we're changing the interval once again. So you'll notice that every time we increase, we're going to change the number of double crochets that are in between our increases. And the quicker you're able to sort of see the pattern there, the easier this is going to be for you. So if you recall, the last time we increased, we worked two double crochets in between the increases. So here's one of my increases, and then I have two that are by themselves, and then another increase. Well, this time we're going to work three double crochets in between the increase. So things are gonna be a little bit different here at the start because we have our chain three that's counting of the first of those three double crochets. So we're going to locate the first stitch and double crochet there. Then we'll work one more double crochet in that next stitch and then we'll increase. Now we'll work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And then we'll increase. So once we get to the end of round eight, we're going to have a total of 40 stitches. And that's what I would like for you to do at this point. Go ahead and finish up round eight. We'll meet back up on the other side. So at the end of round number eight, your mermaid tail will now look something like this. And once again, we'll have a total of 40 stitches at the end of round number eight. To begin round nine, we're going to chain three. And this is gonna be one of those rounds where we don't increase. We're just going to make one double crochet into every single stitch. Once you get to the end of your round, 
you'll go ahead and join with a slip stitch to your third chain and you'll just double check and make sure you have a total of 40 stitches before we move on to the next round. So I've reached the end of round number nine. I have a total of 40 stitches and I'm ready to move on to round 10. So round 10 is going to be an increasing round. And if we recall back to round eight, we had three stitches in between the increases. Well, for round 10, we're going to have four stitches in between each of the increases. So this chain three counts as our first of four stitches. We're going to double crochet once into each of the next three. That's going to total four. And then we're gonna make an increase. So that's two double crochets in the next stitch. And then we'll repeat. We'll make one double crochet into each of the next four and then increase with two double crochets. So there's my four and my increase with two double crochets in the same stitch. And that's your repeat for round 10. Go ahead and finish that up for round 10. We'll have a total of 48 stitches at the end of this round. And once again, you'll join with a slip stitch to that third chain. So I've now reached the end of round 10. I have two double crochets in my last stitch. So my increase is the last. That's always going to be the case for this particular pattern. Anytime you have an increasing round, your last stitch is going to be an increase. That's a visual cue to help you know that you're on the right track. Once again, we're going to have a total of 48 stitches at the end of round 10. Now rounds 11 and 12 are going to be exactly the same and we are not increasing for either one of these rounds. We're going to change the shape just a little bit so you can see that we have this nice fanning out portion and what you see right here is this little section right here. This is where we're going to attach the fin on later. So that's why there's a little bit of a section that's sort of straight and then it sort of fans up. Well now we're going to stop the increase for two rounds. And that's gonna change the shape a little bit more. So what we're going to do for rounds 11 and 12, we're going to start each of those two rounds by chaining three, and that'll count as a double crochet. And we're just gonna work one double crochet into every stitch. You'll have a total of 48 stitches for each one of these rounds. And once again, when you get to the end of the round, you're going to join with the slip stitch to your third chain. So go ahead and finish crocheting rounds 11 and 12 and we'll meet back up at the end. Now I've come to the end of round number 12 and we're ready to move on to round 13. 13 is going to be another increasing round and we're going to start by chaining three. This time we're going to increase every sixth stitch. So we're going to have a total of five double crochets in between each of the increases so that again, that's one more than we had the last time we increased. So this chaining of three is gonna count as that first stitch and then we're going to make one double crochet into each of the next four. That's gonna make sure we have a total of five double crochets in between the increases. Then we're going to increase on the next stitch. So that's making two double crochets in the same space. And then we're going to make one double crochet into each of the next five and repeat. So at the end of round 13, we're going to have a total of 56 stitches. You wanna make sure you're counting as you go along and join with the slip stitch to your third chain. We'll meet back up at the end of this round. So here we are at the end of round 13, and once again, we're gonna have a total of 56 stitches at the end of round 13. Now what we're going to do is jump ahead a little bit because the rest of this pattern is very repetitious. 
So I am going to be working on the baby size just for the, the sake of this demonstration, but this pattern is available in baby all the way up to adult sizes. And you're going to refer to the written instructions in order to get those you know specific increases and how you're going to work this pattern together. So if you read the written instructions, you'll see that you're going to work rounds one through 23 is the same for any size that you're creating. And then once you are finished with round 23, you'll move on if you're going to be working on the next size. So for example, if you're working on the toddler size, you're gonna work through rounds one through 23, just like we've demonstrated here. And you're going to continue with the instructions as they're indicated. So the difference between the sizes is just the increases and the length. So that's where you're going to find the difference, but the techniques are exactly the same. What I'm going to do at this point is finish crocheting up to round 23, and that's for the baby size. Now I mentioned before that the techniques are all the same. We're going to alternate an increasing round with a non-increasing round, and for the purpose of this demonstration, you know, we've covered 13 rounds of that so far. So I think you're probably getting the, you know, getting the technique down. You're comfortable working with that. So now I'm just going to direct you to the written instructions to finish crocheting the length of your mermaid tail. Now I will come back at the end of round 23 to demonstrate one more time just how we're going to work up the body. And then we'll move on to the ruffles and the fin. If you have any questions whatsoever on how to continue working up your mermaid tail beyond this point, just please feel free to leave a question on the pattern page. You can access that at behookedcrochet.com slash mermaid tail. If you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you'll see a comment section and you can leave your question there and I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Okay, so what I've done off camera here is I finished crocheting rounds 13 through 23. And as I mentioned before, the written instructions tell us to alternate rounds where we increase and then a round where we don't increase. So no matter what size mermaid tail you're making, rounds one through 23 are gonna be exactly the same. And here's where the difference comes into play. Now I mentioned before that I'm working on the baby size. And so what I'm going to do for that is follow the instructions for round 24. So round 24, we are going to make one double crochet into every stitch. We're not going to increase and we're gonna repeat that row or that round until our mermaid tail measures 18 inches from this bottom starting edge here. So what you'll need to do at this point is follow the written instructions for the size that you're creating. Now, as I mentioned before, the techniques are all the same for these next few rounds that you'll be working on your own, and you'll just follow the written instructions for guidance. So once you get to the point where you no longer need to increase, and that will be indicated in the pattern, you'll see that final row, and then you'll see a little paragraph in bold and italicized letters that say to repeat that last round until your mermaid tail measures a certain measurement. Now that's how you know that you are done increasing and you're gonna start working on the side and that's based on the size of the pattern you're creating. So what I'm going to do is finish crocheting my section of the tail. So this is going to be the sides of the tail. We've, we have the shaping here completed and I'm gonna work up the side so it will no longer increase. And when we come back, I'll demonstrate how to fasten off We'll talk about the ruffles and the tail. So what I've done off camera here is I have finished crocheting the side of my mermaid tail. Once again, I'm working on the baby size. So my tail now measures 18 inches from our starting point here to where I'm ready to fasten off. Now I've actually come to the point where I'm at the end of my yarn ball. So you can fasten off when you're at this point. I'm just gonna pull what's left through the loop on my hook. And that finishes the body. The next thing we're gonna work on is the ruffles and the fin. So we're gonna make three ruffled sections and we need to skip a row in order to 
have everything lay properly. So we're going to skip the very last row that you made and we're gonna focus in on the second to last row. Now what I have under my hook here is the chain three. So this is the back side of the mermaid tail and I just wanna place my hook underneath that chain three. And then you'll grab your new ball of yarn and create your slip knot. Place that loop on your hook and you're gonna have to turn your work in this direction. We're actually gonna be turning our work quite a bit as we're working these ruffles. So to start things off, we want to chain three, and this is going to count as a double crochet. And we're gonna work with double crochet stitches throughout the entire ruffled pattern. So now that we have our first double crochet here, or our chain three acting as a double crochet, I wanna isolate that chain three where I fastened on. Now I'm just gonna pull that apart and I'm going to work the remainder of my stitches around this chain three. So we want to have a total of five double crochets. So this counts as our first and we'll make four more. And once again I'm just placing my hook directly under the chain. You don't have to work into it. Now once we have our five double crochet there, then we need to turn our tail in that direction. And we need to find the space that is in between where our chain three is and our next post. Now you see this little piece of yarn right there. So that's actually part of the slip stitch from this previous row. That's where I wanna work my next three stitches. So we're gonna double crochet again, so yarn over, and just insert your hook underneath that space. So it's really in between this stitch and the chain three of that row below. And we're gonna double crochet there. We wanna do that three times. And once you have your first stitch in place, it's really easy to just sort of bend your work and hold it in your hands so you can work the remainder of your stitches. So what we have here is the first part of our ruffle. And before we go on, I want to talk a little bit about how this comes together. So if we think about ruffles, we just think about a wave. And that's kind of what we're doing here. So we're going to work down and over and up and over and down and over and up and over. Okay, so that's the pattern and we're gonna have to rotate and twist our mermaid tail in order to make that happen. So we've worked down, we've worked over, now we need to work up. So I'm just gonna rotate my tail like this so that way I'm always crocheting in this direction. And we want to have one post in between. So we're just going to skip this guy right here and move on to this one. So let me just show you a little bit. So this is the chain three. We're skipping the post that's right next to it and we're going to work our next five double crochets around the next post. So just grab that with your fingers and you'll work five double crochet around that post. So if you've ever worked the crocodile stitch, this will probably be familiar with you in that we're using the double crochets as a foundation for this next section. So now we've worked down and over and up. We're gonna go over once again. So I'm gonna rotate my work this way. And then I'm going to find the post that's right next to where I just worked this group. And we're gonna skip it. We're not gonna do anything to that. What we want to do is find the space in between this post and this post, right there. So just stick your hook in between those two posts and come out in between the posts that are right on top of it. We're gonna work three double crochets there And 
And there we have completed the, the repeat for this. So remember, down, we'll work five double crochets down, three double crochets over, five double crochets up, three over. And then we repeat. So we'll rotate our work this way. We'll make sure that we're leaving that post by itself. So I've got my three that I just worked over. I'm going to find the next post that's available, which is right here. And I'm gonna work five double crochet down that post. Then you'll just reset yourself, so shift it back this way so we can work over. Now we're going to find the post that's right next to the group that we worked, and we wanna find that section that's right here. So in between these two posts that are right below it, just insert, well, we'll yarn over first. Insert your hook underneath and through. Work your three double crochets. Now we have to work up, so we'll rotate this way. We'll make sure we skip this post because we always wanna have a post in between each one of the ruffles. So here's what I'm talking about. So this little arch here, that's part of the ruffle. We have a post in between that. And then we have this arch here, we have a post in between that. So we wanna maintain that pattern. It helps keep things organized and looking nice. So we're gonna skip that one, focus our attention on this post here. We'll work five double crochets around the post. Then we'll rotate our work back once more. We're going to skip the post that's right next to our group, but insert our hook in between that post and the one next to it and come out through the top. Okay, so we're gonna double crochet three times there. Okay, so that is the repeat. We've gone through the repeat twice. And at this point, what I need for you to do is finish up this first round of ruffles. We meet back up at the end here and I'll show you how to join with a slip stitch to the end of the round. And like I said, we're going to work three rows of ruffles. But before you jump ahead, I wanna make sure that you're starting those next two rows on the right row, the right foundation here to your body. When we meet back up, we'll have this first row completed and we'll talk about what to do next. So I've made it all the way around and I've stopped just before I have to finish. So I finished crocheting up and I just need to make three double crochets in this space right here to finish things off. And then once you finish that, you'll locate your, your chain three from the very beginning. You'll find that third chain right there at the top and you'll join with the slip stitch to that chain. And then you can fasten off. Now you'll just weave in this tail like you would any other end. What I like to do is weave it directly into the ruffle. So I'll just work this down probably under this group right here because it's a pretty dense area. Just weave it in right there. 
So this pattern has three rows of ruffles. We had we made the first ruffle already, and I mentioned at the beginning that we need to have a solid row of double crochet in between each of the ruffles. So we work we skipped the first one here. We worked our ruffle on the next row. We're going to lift everything up and we're going to skip this row right here. So this is the solid row that we're going to leave in between and we want to fasten on in the row below that. So I'll just put my hook underneath that chain three because that's where I want to start off. And the rest of this part is review. We'll just make a slip knot, place that loop on our hook, and fasten on that way, chain three, that's gonna count as your first double crochet of the five that's gonna be in this group. So what I need for you to do at this point is finish crocheting the next two rows of your ruffles. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is the fin. So the last thing we need to crochet is the fin. Now we're going to start by creating a slip knot. And the written instructions are going to tell you exactly how many chains you need to create. So I'm working on the baby size, so I'm going to chain 27. If you're working on any of the other sizes, you'll just find the size in the parentheses. And all of that is explained in the written instructions at behookedcrochet.com slash mermaid tail. Once you have your foundation chain, we're going to find the fourth chain from the hook. So we'll just count. That's one, two, three, and four. Now I'm going to work in the back bump of the chain. That's just a personal preference of mine. However, you can work in the two side loops if you'd prefer that. So what we're going to do is make one double crochet into every chain. Now once you've finished your foundation row, we're going to proceed with row number two, which is the repeat for the fin. We're going to chain three, and that chain three is going to count as our first double crochet. So we're going to turn our work, and for the fin, to create some of the texture, we're going to work in the back loop only of the stitch. So normally, we're used to inserting our hook under both legs of the V. Well, in this case, we're going to find the back loop. So this one right here, just insert our hook into that back loop. That's where we're gonna work all of our stitches for the fin. So now the first question is, where do we start? So the chain three is our first stitch, and we want to find the next post, which will be right here, and work in the back loop only of that next stitch. And then we're just gonna keep going with that work in the back loop only of the next stitch. And we'll do that all the way down to the end of the row and I'll show you where to work our last stitch. So I'm at the end of my row now. I'm going to work my last well, second to last double crochet looks like the last one here in that back loop only. But I can't end things here. If I do, we're going to be losing a stitch probably every single row if you do the same thing every row. We need to find our chain three, which you can see right here. And that's where we're going to work our last double crochet. And the reason why we have to work in this chain is because the chain three at the beginning of every row counts as a stitch for this particular pattern. Now that's not always the case, but in for this pattern it is the case. So you always want to make your last stitch in the chain three. And counting your stitches is another really good way to make sure you don't decrease by accident. So I mentioned that I'm working on the baby size and I started with a foundation chain of 27. Now the total number of stitches is going to be two less than your foundation number. And you can find that once again at the written instructions. So for me, I have a total of 25 stitches for my fin. 
Now you can see here I've already jumped into row number three. And as I said, rows, well, all of the rows from here on out are going to be a repeat of row two. So we're just going to make one double crochet into every stitch in the back loop only. And we want to do that until our fin measures a certain length from our foundation edge to where we're stopping. So the foundation edge being here to where we are. And that is determined by the size that you're making. So for me, I'm going to crochet until my fin measures 16 inches from the bottom edge. And you're just going to refer to the written instructions under the fin section. And that's gonna tell you exactly how much you need to crochet. Just measure it until you get to that number or as close to that number as possible. And then we'll meet back up and we'll talk about the assembly. There is a little bit of assembly required here, but that's what makes it look so cool. Once you've crocheted the length of your tail, you're just going to thread another piece of yarn on a darning needle about 12 inches or so, maybe a little bit longer. And the first thing we need to do is find the middle of the fin. So we're gonna make a drawstring, and that's what's going to sort of fasten it up and give it the tail shape. So we'll just fold it in half, and I'm just gonna pinch the, the, the edge here just to let me know that this is approximately the middle of the tail. And what we're going to do is run our darning needle in and out of the stitches. Now you don't wanna do what I just did and pull it all the way through. So you'll pull it through, leave yourself about two or three inches here on the bottom. And once you come out, then you're going to go back in and you're just going to go around that post and come back out the top and feed that through and then find the next post, work it around there. And you'll just do this all the way to the end. Now you don't have to worry if this is a different color section of yarn, like you can see here, the color of my tail doesn't really match either of these. That's totally fine. Once we draw this up, you're not gonna see this tail. Okay, so once you have woven in your new strand, what we want to do is hold on to this bottom edge. We don't want to let this slide out. And we're going to take the end right here and we're gonna scrunch everything down. Now, it, you might find it easier to go ahead and release your darning needle, thread this bottom tail just for a moment so we can capture this piece, the first little stitch that we made, and pull that through. And then circle it back around. What we're doing is just creating a knot here. So if you wanna tie a knot, you can. You can do it just how I did. The main goal is that we don't want it to come out when we pull everything. So in order to scrunch it up, we're just going to grab and pull. We wanna pull it pretty tight, but we don't want it to scrunch up so much that it loses some shape. So the way this is going to situate on the mermaid tail, on the cocoon, the body, is so that the ends are sort of scrunched up here on both sides. It's going to attach to the body right here, which we'll demonstrate in a second. And this is going to be the bottom part. So we just want to pull it a little bit so that we have some little ruffles and just so it's gathered a little bit. That's the main goal here. Once you have that gathered up and it's situated the way you would like, then you'll just grab the body and make sure the tail is right in the middle of your seam or your little edge right here. And we're gonna take our darning needle and I've got this threaded on the same tail that I used to draw everything up and you'll just stitch through the bottom of the body. That's gonna be the first stitch that attaches it. And I'm just going to do a whip stitch there just to make sure it's nice and secure. And then we just need to pick a side. Now each side is gonna be worked the same. I'll start on this side here 
And what I like to do is work through the tail here. So I'm gonna do a whip stitch again. So that just means I'm coming in and out the same side. So I'm gonna catch this first ridge right here and just run it through the tail. And you really don't have to worry too much about where you're inserting it. You don't have to go in a specific stitch or anything like that. And you wanna pull it nice and tight. And doing so is going to help conceal this just in case it's a different color than either of these two pieces here. So as we stitch this along, we want to scrunch everything up because if we leave it like this, it'd look awfully funny. So I'm going to find the next ridge. So the beginning of the next row, I'll insert my needle just in there and move over just slightly. So almost in the same place as we made the last stitch. And then pull that tight. Now you'll find the next ridge right here. Insert your darning needle there and work again almost in the same place as that last stitch and pull that nice and tight. Then we're going to find the next little ridge and work it almost in the same spot. And the goal here is that we want to have our entire tail stitched up and we really only want to go up about two and a half to three inches up the body of the tail. So once you have your first side stitched up, you just wanna make sure that wherever you ended, that you end in the same place on the other side. So we're gonna stitch up this side the same as we just did, and we want to make sure that we are ending in approximately the same place. That's gonna make sure our tail is even, and once you've completed that, your mermaid tail is complete. <laughs> 